Brilliant. OK, thank you so much. Can everybody see my code? Yeah, looking good. OK, perfect. So the first thing we're going to want to do is so we have our tile map here. Mine looks a different bit different from Amanda's. And what we're going to do is we want to insert something on our tile map that's going to give us like lives or scores or something. OK, so remember in the Nemo game, we had the seaweed. So if I click into my tile map here, I can see that there's nothing really there and we want to change that. OK, but we change that using what's called an array. So I'm going to just pop into PowerPoint here really quickly just to kind of cover what is an array. Um, and it's actually a very advanced coding term. All right, so we're covering a lot here and it took me definitely a couple of episodes to understand what actually is an array. So arrays store value at a different element, OK? And they're there so you can keep track of where your values are located within the array. So for example, we've worked with variables and variables can hold one piece of data, OK? Only one. But arrays, they can hold multiple pieces of data and generally they must be of the same data type, OK? So there we're after covering arrays and we're after covering data types, which are two really, really big aspects of coding. OK, so what is a data type? You've actually covered some already. So strings is a type of data, is a data type. So alphanumeric sequence of letters and numbers also used as a word. So we've used strings before. Remember when we said um, splash this across the screen or ask for a string? We've done that in our last game. We also have ints or integers. OK, int for short, which are just numbers. So literally just your average numbers. But then we have floats and floats are numbers with a decimal place. OK, so an int might be seven, whereas a float might be seven point five. And the last thing we have kind of looked at, OK, you even done it there with Amanda when you were doing your comparison in that little triangle block, you see true. And then when you click, click on the arrow, you see false. That's known as a Boolean, OK? And they're the different types of data that we have in our coding or that we have looked at anyway, OK? So what has arrays got to do with arcade game? And you're probably wondering. So they're used to create interactive and compelling levels. Because remember, what we really want to do is here, we really want to build on our game and create levels, OK? And interacting with individual tiles allows for easier and more consistent setup of levels. And basically, all that means is we are going to use our tile map as a placeholder for different sprites, OK? And it's actually really, really fun. So I'm going to pop back into my game now. And I am going to go into my tile map. OK, and don't forget to pause me. I think I had to watch um, this done like six times before I actually understood what the purpose of a placeholder was. And I want to say whenever there's going to be a red tile, I want that to be a love heart. OK, and what I'm going to do there is I'm going to go into my tiles. And I am going to create one. OK, so literally just create a new tile and make it fully red. So get your bucket, get your red and make a red tile and press done. And now when you have your red tile, place that red tile wherever you want bubbles to get a life, OK, or to gain a score or something. So I'm going to say I want one here, here and here. So one, two, three, four, five. I'm being generous and giving bubbles five lives to catch. So I'm going to press done. And now we should see the red tiles and I do. OK, so now for the fun part. OK, now for actually using the array. I want everyone to go into loops. And then I want everyone to scroll down. Until they see. Four element value of list. OK, and let's pop this into our on start menu. And what we want to do here is we actually want to get rid of list and we want to put in an array of all our red tiles. OK, so we find our tiles in scene. So let's go into scene and let's see if we can look for a word that says array. And aha, I see it. So array of all transparent tile locations. That grayed out tile is just transparent. It means like invisible. So let's take this out and let's pop it in instead of list. See the way list is highlighted in yellow? 
Let's take that out, OK? And now we have for element value of all R, and we want to change this to our red tile. So we want to say our value is our red tile, OK? Now, that's the hard part done. So what we want to do now is we want to actually create a sprite that looks like a, a heart or a life or anything like that that you would like to do. So I'm going to pop into sprites and I am going to take out the first line of code that we're super used to, which is set my sprite. And I am going to change my sprites name to, let me see, what will I call it? Heart, what do you think Amanda? Yeah, heart's perfect. Now, I'm actually not going to draw out my sprite in here. Like we usually go in here and we draw a sprite, but I'm going to create an animation of a love heart. So remember a couple of weeks ago, I got you to do a flip book in the preparation for using animations. Now is the time. So I'm going to leave that blank and something new that we haven't done before. I'm going to actually change the kind to be something I want. So I'm going to add a new kind and I'm going to call this life. And press OK. And the reason I'm doing that is because right now the game seems pretty simple and pretty small and the code isn't too heavy. But in week two and three, we start to introduce a lot of different types of sprites. So it is good to kind of give them their own kind. So I'm going to say, OK, set heart to be a blank sprite of kind life. And now time for animations. And I know some people done animations a couple of weeks ago, so well done. These were weeks ahead. So let's go down to advanced, click on advanced and extensions. So click on extensions and animation. And now our game is going to refresh and we'll see that we have the option for animations now. And remember the code is here. So if you want to pause me to catch up, just pause me and leave that code on the screen before we go any further. OK, so let's go into animation and I am going to take out the first block of code, which is animate my sprite. And I'm going to bring this in and be careful where you're putting it. All right. We need to put it underneath the red. OK, so underneath the heart. And we know that my sprite is called heart. So change that to heart. And now I'm going to actually draw my heart to my animation. And I've been practicing this, haven't I, Amanda? So, yeah. <laughs> so hopefully this goes to plan. So I am going to take my pencil and my red color. And I am going to go three across each way and then to the side and then down two. And let's see if this works. Woo! OK, so I have kind of the outline of my heart, but now I want to shadow it. OK, so I want to like make it look like it's kind of 3D. So. I'm going to bring this out the black color for shadowing and I'm just going to go over the outline. Like so, so. really what we're going to try and do Corey is where an animation generally is kind of given the illusion of movement. So we're going to set this up so that it kind of flashes back and forth. Are we? Exactly. Yeah, so I'm going. This is my small heart now and I'm actually going to do a big heart afterwards. So it looks like it's a beaten heart. Um, this is my favorite part of our cage. Um, so see the way I'm actually getting my little white um, tool there. That's just to kind of make it look like it's like there's a little highlight on the heart. So once you have your image done and you're happy with it, press the plus button. And now I'm going to do my bigger heart, but I'm probably going to need a bigger space. So what if I go like 18, 19 by 19, Amanda, what do you think? Yeah, just few more, a bit more width and length and then you have enough yeah. to make it bigger. Yeah. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. One, two. One, two, three, four, five. I'll be, I'll be upset now if this doesn't go my way. I've put so much work into practicing it. No, I have faith, Corey. <laughs> oh, I think I need one more there. I think it's four down. And OK, moment of truth. We're going to go down. Let's see if they. Woo! OK, so again, I want to just do my outline really quickly, so I'm just going to go one above the red just so it looks like a shadow and down and keep going. And wait and you see at the end this actually does. Well, hopefully it looks like um, a beaten heart. It's so cool. So 
I'm going to just do what I done last time and fill my heart. And I'm going to take my white pencil and I'm going to just make that there so it looks like it's folding in and I'm going to do my highlight. And then when you're done, you can press this little play button up here and it will show you. Woohoo! OK, that looks pretty good. I'm happy enough with that. So I'm going to press done and it's saved. <laughs> good. Now, I'm going to change my interval, so I'm going to make it faster. I'm going to go 200 milliseconds and then I'm going to loop it, which means just keep doing it over and over again. But you might find that the heart is not on the um, it's not on the it's not on the tile where you want it to be. That's the whole reason why they're there. OK, so what we're going to do now is we're going to say um, place, I think. Let me see. Yeah, we'll go into scene and we're looking for something that has the word place in it because I want to place that heart on top of that tile. So we use place random before in our shark game, but we don't want that. We want this one here. Place my sprite on top of tile map. Take this out and be careful again where you're putting it. It needs to go directly under your animation. Now, remember that your red tile map is your value. OK, so you want to place your heart on top of your red tile map, which is your value. So let's take value and pop it in instead of tile. And now my heart should be on the tile map and it is. But that red tile map is in the way. I want it to be invisible. OK, I want it to be transparent. So let's have a look back in scene. And remember to pause me at any stage because this is this stuff is heavy like this is hard but we are going to do this section for so many different sprites i think maybe like five sprites we're doing it for so by the time you get to the fifth one you will be flying so let's go down and we're looking for set transparent at tile map okay so set transparency at tile map so let's take this out and again be careful where you put it and it's going to go in here and i want it to be transparent on my value Brilliant, good idea. Everyone pause at this stage. Go back. I'm telling you the arrays are going to be so important. So definitely pause my screen there. Um, but I think we're good. I think we're back. So now you can see that my flashing love heart is on top of the red tile, but the red tile is now transparent so you can't see it. So it looks like the love heart is just there. And woo! I'm so happy with this. I love it. OK, one last thing before we wrap up for today is I want to say when I overlap with a heart, I want to get a life, OK? Like I want to actually get something in return. But OK, I made the error of using a tile map overlap because I thought, oh, the red tile, if you overlap with that, but no. Our red tile is just there to host our heart on. And our heart is actually a sprite. OK, of kind life. So what we're doing here is we're going to be overlapping using sprites, not overlapping using tile maps. So let's go into sprites and let's go down to on sprite of kind player overlaps with other sprite of kind player. And this time we're going to say if the player overlaps with the life, remember we made our own kind, well, then I want to go into info and we're used to this from our shark game. We're going to go into info and I'm going to change life by one. OK, that says minus one, but I know that I can actually change that. So I'm going to change it to one and let's see what happens. I'm going to actually be on one. I think, yeah, look, and I can get so many and we ran into this problem before. OK, and remember, all we have to do is destroy that other sprite so we can't keep getting loads of lives. So let's go into sprites and take out the destroy my sprite and we've used this before and let's pop it in. But I don't want to destroy heart. OK, no. Amanda, what do you think it's going to be here? Yeah, so that was even when we first played around, we got confused by that, didn't we? So destroy yeah. heart will destroy the kind of most recently created thing. So we need to say destroy the other sprite that we just overlapped with. Exactly. So we're going to take out this other sprite and we're going to pop that in instead of heart. And remember, if you want to press the plus button, you can and you can destroy the heart. I'm going to say what heart effects. And OK, let's see if this works. 
Woo, done. Okay. Brilliant. So that is our game for the moment. Remember, this is going to continue on for a couple of weeks. And um, so real quickly, I just want to go back. Forget, don't, don't forget to save your game. Sorry, there's the little save button here. So just beside where I have webinar five, press save. And we are going to go through what did we learn today? OK, and most importantly, we covered arrays and arrays are just a data structure that contains a group of elements. OK, remember we said they can hold multiple data types and typically they hold the same kind of data type. And we discussed what data types were strings, ints, floats and booleans. So what is your home challenge? So your home challenge for this week is that you have to figure out like or find something that you collect at home. OK, what do you collect? It can be comic books, games, coins, action figures, books, so on. OK, anything that you collect. And then I want, want you to answer these questions. How big is the collection? How is it organized? Are the items sorted in any way? And how would you go about, about finding an item in that collection? OK, so what you're really going to be looking for here is your array vocabulary. So let's take this for example, the array length. OK, what is the total number of items in the collection? So I'm going to say that I collect Harry Potter books. OK, the total number of items in my collection would be seven because there's seven books. Am I right, Amanda, in Harry Potter? Yeah. Correct. Yeah, I love Harry <laughs> Potter. Um, so that's the length of my array. How do I sort it? So how could you order the items in the collection that you have? So I'm going to use the Harry Potter books, for example. If it was me, I would have them from one to seven, like literally one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's how I would sort that array. Then the index is a unique address or location in the collection. So, for example, if I wanted to know um, what index the prisoner of Axaban is, it would be sorry, I know I said that wrong. It would be <laughs> Amanda is so annoyed at me. It would be three. Yes, very yep. good. And finally, what type of item is being stored? So in my case, it's books. OK, so have we got any questions, Amanda? Did you have a chance to have a look over your Q&A? Yeah. Yeah, no, I did. Um, so I suppose there's there's a couple there. Just I think saving the game is really important. So you said yeah. that at the end. So do save your game because we are going to build on that from from next week on. There is one here just about making bubbles jump more than one block. Um, for the moment, we just oh, want to see one because we are going to get to that, aren't we, Corey? Yeah, no, we are going to get to that. But you can have a play around at home and play around with your um, VY and AY. So we set ours, I think, was a minus 100 and... 200 yeah. play around with those numbers and uh, you'll be able to get bubbles to jump further yeah perfect and that was kind of it Corey because I think everyone's just getting to a point where they've their game set up so we'll get lots more questions as we move on no doubt okay brilliant so everyone remember um, any resources including your home challenges can be found at home space files there is a document up there as well if you want to download it um, and it's all about different data types and um, how you can match the right data type to whether it's a string or inter blooding and then your home challenge will be there as well about your collection that you have at home so well done everyone and we will see you next week at the same time thanks for joining us thanks. bye Bye.